you've been around forever. I want to say it was the mid '90s you started training. Ninety-five. Yeah. 95. Give us for people that don't know you. Tell us a little bit of, of your backstory. Where you grew up? Grew up in Ireland, County Kildare. My dad ran the, the Curra Bloodstock Agency, a uh, big, big I company know, over there, and uh, um, I was involved in it all ever since I was five or six years old. I've been working with horses all my life. How did you end up over here in Kentucky? Um, my dad made me travel all the time when we were kids, and uh, I did a stint in Nidri Stud, Esmond, Virginia first, and then I went and did a summer at Delmar with John Sullivan, who trained the bar. And, um, once I did a summer in Del Mar, all I wanted to do was stay in America. So <laughs> that was it. That's why I came back three years later and never left home. For um, Neil Drysdale, brought Gorgeous here. To, she was second to Bayaco in the Spinster for Neil. Yes. And then Neil um, just ran out of it, horses, and I ended up going to work for Bill Shoemaker for a long time. And, and then um, John Tofan and Trudy McCaffrey started me off as a private trainer here. Hits. Their colors, yes. or their colors. Yeah, John and Trudy's yeah. colors, yeah. So you were a private trainer for them, that's what brought you to yeah, Kentucky? Yeah, I had eight horses originally came back here, yeah. Then they broke up? They broke up, but I still trained for them, and um, then I went out on my own. The year Freehouse ran the Derby, I went public. What horses do you have now? I always carry like 15 or 20, yeah. You got no interest in having 50 horses? No, too old, too old. Yeah. Well, I would have done the years ago, but I, I you know, I, I prefer to raise my son and He's grown up now, but I, I got to the stage now. I'm content. I'm content to work for people that want to work with me. You know. So that's what kept you in Lexington because you used to be stabled at Churchill. I was I at know. Churchill for but, years. But, and then, but your son was young. Yeah, when I got divorced from his mom, um, I came back here so I could be close to him. And now, does he work in racing? Oh, he works on the starting gate, and he's worked for Michael McCarthy and Brendan Walsh, and uh, he's meant to. He, well, he won't study, so. He said, uh, he's thinking he wasn't going to be a trainer, but he just announced to me the other day he is again, so I don't know. Loves horses. He's a very good horse person. Just tell us about, you know, trying to compete in today's environment. You know, Brad Cox, this is an amazing stat. His first grade one was in April 2018. He's now won, I think it's 45 grade one races. Mm -hmm. Remarkable. He trains for all the, the biggest buyers in the... I've dealt with Brad a lot and I have a lot of, very, a lot of respect for him. So, uh, you know, he's someone that, you know, he, he puts it, he puts in the time and the effort and he, and he, he just lives, eats and dreams, it, you know, and he's, a, he, he does a fantastic job. I admire him and I really admire Brendan Walsh too, another guy with a lot of horses. We work, they work every day, you know, they go to one different track every day. They're on top of everything that's going on. So I totally respect them. That's their choice. I, I just got to a stage in my life where I'd rather have 30 or 20, 30, that would be, so I can control what I do on my own. You it's know? an old, old fashioned working stable, kind of like a burlap and oat pick guy rather than a vacuum trainer, if you know what I'm saying. But we just do, I do everything the way I was taught by the, my, the last generation. So it's com probably completely different to how the other operations run, but it's just the way I know and I'm not really interested in changing. You know, I do it the way I was taught. You know, you never quit. You just gotta keep sticking in there, and there's always something around the corner. It might be the worst looking horse you ever seen. And he turns out to be a champion. So, you know. well, you were showing me that when uh, this horse that was, you said the, the most impressive maiden winner, 108, I believe in change. 108 and change, yeah, yes, yeah, at, at Churchill. And then you told me, oh, he's five. Five year old. Yeah. Well, he'd been through a few camps and uh, just had some issues, and I was I was the lucky one that he got all the time, and he's a tribute to his owners more than anybody because they gave him all the time to be who he is now. Daisy Devine, you won a lot of greeted stakes with her. Yes, you're very Including good the Jenny Wiley great yes, one here yeah, at Keeneland. Yeah. Too bad you didn't have her now for a Kentucky Downs, That would huh? be nice. Be yeah. Nice, yeah. She was brilliant filly, but we, she broke her maiden for 30. It, it just goes to show yeah, these horses. Yeah. That I, I don't think she would have been a good horse if I hadn't run her in that race because she was very temperamental as a two-year-old. She got good as she got older, but That's, she needed that confidence. You know? That's an old school thing too. Yeah. You don't have to necessarily break them for the main special. Yeah. You can look at the big picture and. And I tried to run her. I tried to run her at Arlington as a four-year-old and a start of thirty, but they found out she was entered. No one entered. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes to show that yeah. was twenty twelve. Yeah. Uh, Daisy Divine, how hard it is to win these oh, and yeah. getting even harder these graded yeah, stakes. She was, she was only a five thousand dollar yearling, you know. So. She just came. She was a uh, came out of the I blue. Some yeah. of the best in the business, mm -hmm. Hall of Famers, yeah. uh, Neil Drysdale. I mean, you've worked for them. Neil Drysdale, 
he said Shoemaker, mm -hmm. uh, who is, of course, one of the best jockeys ever. Underrated as a trainer, perhaps? He yeah, he really was starting to really... He was following Paddy Gallagher's lead, obviously, because he'd ridden for so long, but he was starting to really go blossom. And then, of course, he had the accident, unfortunately. Then, you know, it's quieting them all down. But he was probably, the, the other than my own father, the greatest man I ever knew. Your enthusiasm is the same for the game that it was yeah, when you were in very Ireland much, as, up a, to, as a lad? As, as Doc Hartle, who you knew, told me a long time ago when I was crying the blues one day, he said, I wouldn't worry about it, son, you're too stupid to do anything else. So that's about true.